Well, in today's ever-evolving professional landscape, it's not just about technical prowess. It's about mastering the art of soft skills. Our next report delves in the top 10 in-demand soft skills for 2024, empowering you to thrive in your career, lead with impact, and seize endless opportunities. Take a look. In today's rapidly changing world, technical skills are no longer enough to guarantee success in your career. Employers are increasingly looking for candidates with strong soft skills, also known as power skills. These are the interpersonal and personal qualities that enable you to work effectively with others and thrive in any work environment. So what exactly are soft skills? They are a broad range of abilities including communication, teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking, leadership, emotional intelligence, creativity, adaptability, time management and stress management. Strong communication skills are essential for success in any job. This includes the ability to listen attentively, express yourself clearly and write persuasively. Effective communication allows you to build relationships, share ideas and resolve conflicts productively. Teamwork is another crucial soft skill. The ability to work effectively with others is essential for achieving common goals. This includes being able to collaborate, delegate tasks, resolve conflicts and celebrate successes together. Problem solving skills are in high demand across all industries. Employers are looking for candidates who can identify problems, analyze information and develop creative solutions. Based on recent research, here are the top 10 soft skills that are most in demand by employers in 2024. These include strategic thinking, negotiation, persuasion, presentation skills, critical thinking, mentoring, emotional intelligence, innovation, financial management, and resilience. By developing these top 10 soft skills, you can increase your value to employers, boost your career prospects, and achieve greater success in your professional life. Remember, soft skills are not something you are born with. They can be learned and developed through practice and experience. So, start investing in your soft skills today and watch your career take off. Bureau Report, we on World is One. And for more on this, we're now being joined by Neeti Sharma, the co-founder and president of Team Lease at Tech, and she's joining us live from Bengaluru. Thanks very much for being here with us today, Ms. Sharma. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Right, Ms. Sharma, I want to first seek your uh, perspective as to why is it important to ac acquire soft skills in today's time and how does it put people who have soft skills over others who don't? Yeah, so I think soft skills are as important as domain or hard skills as we call them, you know, uh, be primarily because employers are looking for candidates or job seekers who are multi-skilled who just don't mm -hmm. don't know the technical part of the skills but a lot of like like your report said you know communication teamwork uh you know i would actually put even conflict resolution as one of the key soft skills that uh, employers are looking for you know time management just working together so many cultural differences so i think soft skills are equally important uh, you know, if not more as compared to domain or hard skills. And uh, unless and until every job seeker has a balance between soft skills and hard skills, they don't become as uh, employable as maybe somebody who will probably be good at communication, good at teamwork, you know, able to uh, work, you know, work effectively with, uh, you know, across regions, across geographies, especially now because, you know, our demographics and our geographies are, you know, boundaryless. So one has to ensure that, you know, we have the adequate soft skills that are required for their role. Of course, while being, you know, while being kind, you know, you have the right attitude to work, you know, but but soft skills, and like your report said that, you know, you don't need, you, yeah. none of us are born with it. You practice it over a period of time and you and you gain those soft skills. So I think it's it's very critical and every employer today is looking at job seekers and even lateral employees who have a balance of hard as well as soft skills. Right, Ms. Sharma, you speak of how it is extremely important and imperative uh, to acquire soft skills in today's time. 
Let's also talk about the challenges that people face in acquiring soft skills. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge today is the awareness that somebody lacks a certain kind of soft skill. You know, I mean, whether it's uh, whether it's uh, students passing out of schools or colleges, whether it is job seekers, whether it is, you know, employees working in certain organizations, okay. first and foremost, the self-awareness is very important. And I think uh, because probably we don't point it out as openly as we should, uh, you know, hey, you know what, your communication skills are not good enough to be able to lead that particular team or take a particular job role. Or, uh, you know, you are not a team player, so I can't put you as a team lead as against, you know, you continuing to be an individual contributor for the company. I think first and foremost, the biggest challenge is us being aware that we lack a you know, certain set of soft skills. The second is how we practice, because a lot of job seekers that, en the, you know, that enter the labor market actually don't have avenues to practice their soft skills. I mean, the, the top of the list of skills communication, and I'm not saying just English language, but maybe across multiple languages in our country, how am I able to effectively mm -hmm. communicate what I want to communicate, right. or maybe uh, understand what somebody else is, you know, uh, communicating to me, you know, I think that that whole thing about how do I practice the communication, how do I practice teamwork, how do I practice conflict resolution, or, you know, just uh, cultural differences, I think unless and until people have opportunities to practice, I think I would actually rate that as a second biggest challenge, uh, you know, in, in our country, at least for the youth. Right, Ms. Sharma, speak of how uh, one of the major hurdles is that people lack awareness in acquiring soft skills. Just to follow up on that, what are the efforts being undertaken uh, by the government as well as the private sector to skill their employees on the same? Okay. I think for the government side, there's a lot being done, you know, right from all the possible skill development schemes that Government of India has launched in the last couple of you know years every skill along with technology domain skills i think every program ensures that there is a certain element of soft skills being trained to the students to the learners so i think that's that's a great step by the government mm -hmm. the other other big change that actually will start showing results is the new education policy implementation because that policy actually integrates on the job learning, which is where you know all of us actually technically have learned a lot of soft skills. So, you know, a lot of students will be able to learn that. It integrates soft skills as part of the course curriculum and of course along with the technical and the domain skills. So I think from the government end, these two key uh, what do I call uh, steps are are uh, going to create a big impact. On the private sector side, I think as soon as somebody joins a company, I think the employer gauges where the mismatch is, what the gap is, mm -hmm. and then puts in that kind of effort in, you know, in training people. I mean, a, one of a very popular program is for first-time managers, because managers don't know how to manage teams, how to communicate, how to just work across geographies, work across demographics, right, cultural differences, understand what may be sensitive for me. Uh, you know, let's say sitting in Bangalore may not be probably sensitive to somebody sitting in East. I think right. those kind of learning programs are important from the employer side. And I think a lot of large employers are spending time, effort and resources in uh, skilling uh, their employees. Right, Ms. Sharma, thanks very much for taking our time and joining us here on Beyond. Thank you so much.